okay <coughs> the next chapter is climate change and environment preparing to face the future preparing to face the future net zero pledges of countries you are all aware india india want to achieve net zero by what is this net zero tell me i think for you environment and ecology completed no net zero carbon emission means what do you understand from it emission and so by the end of 2007 by the 2070 how much you are emitting that much you are absorb so for that what we need to do first of all you have to go for alternatives so that you can generate less amount of emission some limited amount of emissions are inevitable that inevitable emissions must be absorbed by the proper technology or proper carbon sink or proper uh, green cover so that is what net zero it's not like you are not supposed to emit you emit whatever you emit you must absorb so for that if you go on increasing if you are go on emitting no you can't absorb that much so for that you have to go for alternative parallelly whatever the limited inevitable emissions that you are emitting that you must absorb hmm so india is 2070 and all these countries germany is 2045 remaining all are 2050 Turkey is 2053. Some countries are 2060. Emission gap report. Who will publish? This also you have to write. These are important. Okay. Emission gap report. United Nations Environment Program. Nobel laureate argued that the most effective way to combat climate change was to let the nations grow first. because this argument suits for us that is why we have taken this argument this argument is this you read it's very interesting if per capita income growth in the next 40 years compares with the 40 years just past vulnerability to climate change should diminish and the resources available for adoption should be greater I say this not to minimize the concern about the climate change but to anticipate whether developing countries should make sacrifice in their development to minimize the emission of gases that may change the climate to their disadvantage their best defense against climate change may be their own continued development see today see today we are talking about the climate change we are talking about zero emission reducing emissions all these things developing countries definitely need finances finance is the biggest problem developed countries are not in a position to provide the resources in this critical time if you really want to combat the climate change you need money from where you will bring money from where you will bring money developed countries they are not giving the money the best way to get the money is to develop on your own when you develop on your own you will have the resources just use that resources for greenery that means green development if you don't grow if you don't develop you don't have a resources if you don't have a resources there is no point in speaking about this climate change and all so according to the nobel laureate the best way the best way to combat the climate change was let the nations grow first if they grow they will have the finances then immediately you may ask me a question sir if you grow we are emitting no if you are grow means you are emitting but if you don't grow who has to give the money to you should you stop the development at all no you can't stop the development you can't sacrifice the development then the only thing is first of all you have to grow if you grow then you will have the resources then you can use it that is what he said if you grow if you grow that means if you are growing the companies generate profits and internal resources and thus fund their investment 
It's not like government only will get the money. Companies will also get the money. So today you are asking every company, like recently we have passed that Energy Conservation Act and we brought lot of compulsions. Well, company, if it is not growing, if it is not getting enough profits, how can you expect the company to turn into green resources? It's very difficult. If you are growing, no company will get a profit. At the individual level, company will start investing. Another reason why it is realistic proposition is that securing funding from either developed nations or multinational organizations is rather difficult. We are all know, we are all aware about this fact. But simply for the time being, your, your environment minister has to time pass for two days. He will go and he will attend the UNFCC meeting and he will discuss something. At the end of the day, you are all aware you don't get single rupee from developed countries. And for that, newspapers will write all the articles. We idiots, we will read for, we will waste our time for one week. Any progress is happening. The realistic proposition is this, that is what Nobel laureate is saying. We are all aware you don't get money. They will come up with lot of kahanis. Okay. But they don't give the money. That is why I am saying the realistic thing is, instead of depending on all these people, first you grow. If you are really interested to protect the environment, if you also want to play drama like America and other countries, we also start all these things. If you are really interested to do, you need money. That money comes from the development. Otherwise, whatever the nonsense play that you will play, there is no use. Aiming to reduce their dependence on Russian crude oil and natural gas, countries in Europe had to switch to the coal to keep their homes warm and well lit. See the hypocrisy that European Union. Today you are talking about uh, the green economy, reducing emissions and all. Suddenly there was a problem in the Eurasia, that is Russia-Ukraine war. You want to teach a lesson to the Russia. For that, you don't want to purchase the oil and natural gas. Oil and natural gas from the Russia. What you are doing? You are shifting to the alternative. What is that alternative? Coal. Then where is your uh, environmental ambitions? So when your personal interest lies, you will take care about your personal interest. You will forget about your environment. You will forget about your global responsibility and all. That is how they are behaving. That is what he is saying. The behavior of European Union nations in 2022, eminently understandable, demonstrates that returns of energy security as a prime requirement for countries. Therefore, it stands to reason that it would be no different for developing economies too. Yes, you also do the same thing. When they are protecting their own interests, why can't you protect your own interest? Grow. That is what Nobel laureate is saying. This is true. <coughs> Progress on eight national missions of the, what is the NAPCCC? National Action Program on Climate Change. There are eight. I think the mission, just I said, you know, it will come here. Green India Mission. Uh, national Mission for Green India. Okay, afforestation. This is an achievement, but these eight are important. National Solar Mission. National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency, National Mission on Sustainable Habitat, National Mission for Green India, National Water Mission, National Mission on Strategic Knowledge for Climate Change, National Mission for Sustaining Himalayan Ecosystem, National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture. So we have started, these missions were started in 2012. 2012, not new, 2012 missions these are. So, there is some progress. If you read, you can understand. Okay. Sustainable agriculture. Some 0.15 lakh hectares under the organic farming and 10 lakhs hectare are under micro irrigation. Um, again, Himalayan ecosystem, some R&D programs. National mission for strategic knowledge. You have created some centers of excellence. Water mission, Jal Shakti Abhiyan, Green India mission. I said 10 lakh hectares, but we are end up with 2.1 lakh hectare. National Mission on Sustainable Habitat. So, some rail, metro rail network, household toilets, public toilets, that is comes under sustainable habitat. Solar Mission, 61.62 gigawatt. This is one great achievement 
that India has achieved today in our installed capacity 40 percent is by C. Again when you are reading this is very very important again I will deal when I am explaining the infrastructure. Installed capacity is different generated capacity is different. <coughs> installed means you have installed the plant in that 40 percent is from renewable but when you are generating does really all your renewable energy sources are performing? No. In generating still 70 percent is coming from thermal. In generating still 70 percent is coming from thermal. But in install no, in install the renewable energy has reached to the 40 percent out of total energy mix. Total is around 400 gigawatt in that 100 gigawatt is from renewable in that 60 is from solar remaining all together 40 ok. These numbers no, please remember ok. <coughs> India's updated nationally determined contributions NDCs. I think uh, are you aware about these updated targets? Did environment and ecology faculty has given it to you? 50 percent of energy mix is from renewable energy sources. Uh, the, 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 uh, energy emission intensity 45 percent by 2030, life mission uh, 33 to 35 has enhanced to 50, okay, that is what the changes. You can see create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of CO2 by 2030 uh, and life mission, are you aware about this life mission? Lifestyle for? environment you have to change your lifestyle for changing environment ok adopt climate friendly and cleaner path that the one followed hitherto by the others at the corresponding level of economic development and green climate fund green climate fund and 50 percent of the energy mix from the renewable sources by 2030 these are some of the updated NDCs nationally determined contributions. We have promised something at that meeting, but after that we have enhanced. That means we have improvised it. So that is about this. Status of forest and tree cover. One of the three, that 7.24 is the number of that point. One of the three quantifiable targets of India's NDC is to achieve a carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons through additional forest and tree cover by the 2030. The forest and tree cover in India has shown a gradual and steady trend of increase in the last one and a half decade. Schemes. Hmm. First one is Green India Mission. I think just now I have given. Kampa Fund. Uh, for what purpose Kampa? So if you are diverting the forest land for any development purpose, you have to compensate some money. That money will be utilized for the afforestation purpose. National afforestation program, green highway policy. That means on national highways, you have to policy for enhancement of urban greens. That means in urban area, you have to increase the green cover. National agroforestry policy. In the agricultural field, you have to grow the trees. Submission on agroforestry. Both are same. Okay. Ah, carbon stock in forest in India has been rising, rising. Carbon stock, ah, what is the level of carbon stock in forest? 7 to 0 4 million, that means how many billions? 7.2 no? 7.2 billion, 7.2 billion. See the point is 6.9 billion. 7.0 billion, 7.08 billion, 7.1 billion, 7.2 billion. How much you need to do? Extra 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon sink you have to create. That means the 7 has to go to let it be 10 or 11. That is what the meaning of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon stock that you need to create. Okay. So the increase in slope is 6.9 to 7.2. That is the development that we have in, in last 8 years. Okay? Indian State of Forest Report, Forest Survey of India will release it. Okay. <coughs> Preservation of ecosystem, a critical adoption action. So, how we need to preserve the ecosystem? First one, mangroves and coastal wetlands 
form the first line of defense for the coastal communities against the increased storm surges, flooding and hurricanes. So, we need to protect the mangroves and wetlands, coastal wetlands, mangroves and coastal wetlands. As per a recent study, certain mangrove species in Chilika and Sundarban along the east coast and Dwaraka and Porbandar along the west coast of India are likely to reduce and shift landward by 2070 due to a decline in suitable habitat in response to precipitation and sea level changes. That means they are going to shift on landward side. That means their number or their area or their size is going to decline by 2070 in both eastern and western. That means mangroves are there in both Odisha and as well as Gujarat. National Coastal Mission Program on Conservation and Management of Mangroves and Coral Reefs is being implemented. Okay. Next, <clears throat> regulatory measures are implemented through Coastal Regulation Zone Notification 2019 under Environmental Protection Act of 1986. Prelims bit. Coastal Regulation Zones are the regulations under uh, which act? Environmental Protection Act, not Wildlife Protection Act. Okay? Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, not under that. Environmental Protection Act. Now, after that, Wildlife Protection Act 1972, Indian Forest Act of 1927, Biological Diversity Act of 2002. That means various regulations we have passed under this. Under Environment Protection Act, under Wildlife Protection Act, the Indian Forest Act, and Biological Diversity Act. Next, increasing mangrove cover in India. Consistently increasing? Uh, yes. Where? Ah, from here you take. That is fine. Uh, 2015. There was a bit, uh, not now, some years back, some 6 7 years back. There was a forest survey report. So, there is an increase in forest cover in India. Normally, what we feel? No, the forest cover in India is declining. No, forest cover in India is increasing. This is the statistics. Okay. It is increasing. Don't think like mangroves are declining. Okay. The data is something different. Okay. Increasing installed electricity generation capacity, rising share of non-fossil fuel based capacity. I think, uh, okay. Total thermal installed capacity in installed capacity total how much close to 400 i can't draw exact line but close to 400 in that <coughs> more than 200 is from thermal uh, after that renewable all the renewable they put together uh, after that large hydro large hydro large hydro is not considered under renewable though it won't emit any pollution large hydro will it emit any pollution no but it has its own environmental impacts that is why it don't consider under renewable okay but small hydro they will consider under renewable uh, next what is this red one nuclear okay just have an idea percentage of non-fossil fuels reached 40 percent this scale you take this is percentage of non-fossil fuel in the total energy mix in the year 2014-15 we were at 35 something 30 to 35 now we reached more than 40 in installed capacity okay this scale is for these bars <laughs> ah. projected optimal mix of installed capacity ah, in installed capacity that is within the Renewable energy, no, just a minute, projected optimum mix for 2029-30, by the time of 2029-30, we are projecting like, uh, what will be the share of coal and lignite, it will come down to 32, I don't know, solar will go to 34, wind will go to 17, you can, okay, just have an idea. Projected fall of average CO2 emission rate per kilowatt hour of electricity due to significant addition in non-fossil fuel based installed capacity. 
this is the projection that means we are going to reduce the emission per kilowatt hour so to generate the kilowatt hour of energy how much carbon that we are emitting and how much we are going to emit because of our green technologies and all it is going to reduce salient features of national green hydrogen mission uh, i told you no green hydrogen production capacity of at least 5 million metric ton per annum cumulative reduction of fossil fuel imports over 1 lakh crore and creation of 6 lakh jobs this is the point on which they have asked the question so it will no this is about green hydrogen mission what is green hydrogen what is green hydrogen what is green hydrogen uh, tell me uh, electrolysis when you electrolyze the water it will divide it into hydrogen and oxygen it gives the energy but the electrolysis is fueled by the renewable energy that should not again take the normal solar energy okay so we have started a mission ah, what is the what is the target 5 million tons per annum we have to generate and it will reduce the fuel imports worth of 1 lakh crore reduce the fuel imports that means petroleum and generate the 6 lakh jobs renewable energy capacity addition about 125 gigawatt and abatement of nearly 50 million metric tons of annual ghg emission it reduces the emission it adds the green cover to the energy mix it generates the employment it reduces the import bill ah, next interventions what are the interventions financial incentives targeting domestic manufacturing of electrolyzers production of green hydrogen electrolyzer is very 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 important in this green hydrogen the electrolyzer should generate more energy than what it is consuming if it consumes more than what it is generating there is no use so the efficiency of electrolyzer is important to improve the efficiency of electrolyzer we must incentivize the people that means industry that we have started giving very important regional cap sorry regions capable of supporting large scale production and utilization of hydrogen to be developed as a green hydrogen hubs we have to create green hydrogen hubs uh, policy development of an enabling policy framework to support establishment of green hydrogen ecosystem robust standard and regulations standards and regulations are important okay uh, next public private partnership anyway inevitable skill development program very important not ministry of power ministry of new and renewable energy okay because ministries are important critical minerals key to green transition so this box again important 7.2 in this box what they are explaining is okay we are ready to transfer it to the green energy but transition to the green energy requires a critical minerals unfortunately that minerals are not available in india so here they have written <coughs> cobalt copper lithium nickel and rare earth elements are critical for producing electric vehicles batteries harnessing solar power and wind energy so this is very very important now so this rare earth metals are essential for permanent management that are vital for wind turbines and ev motors electricity network needed huge amount of copper and aluminium with copper being a cornerstone for all electricity related technologies while the demand for critical minerals is set to increase because of the global preference and emphasis towards the renewable energy the global supply chain of the critical minerals is highly concentrated and unevenly distributed the skewed distribution of the resources poses a supply risk in the face of its enhanced demand so this is a critical challenge that survey is warning okay modi you are good at announcing all these ambitious targets but that requires some critical metals and these metals are unevenly distributed and skewed towards a particular countries now every country is moving towards the transition of green energy every country needs this metals so definitely it may create it may create shortage and so that you have to pay if you are paying more for these metals there is no use in generating the green energy
So one critical challenge for the green energy is this key metals. Okay, you write about technology, investment, manpower, all these things, reliability of that power, storage technology. Apart from all these things, this is very, very important. When you are highlighting this point, you must say that according to economic survey. Concentration of production of selected minerals, you can see. Uh, did you find India anywhere? <laughs> no. Anywhere. No. No. See, copper. Chile, Chile, Peru, Chile, China, Democratic Republic of Congo, take the case of lithium, Australia, Australia, Chile, Chile, Nickel, Indonesia, Philippines, Russia, Canada, Cobalt, DRC, Australia. Again, that whole thing in China, they are concentrated. This is a one serious problem that you must understand. Okay. So, a carefully crafted, multi-dimensional, Mineral policy would reduce our dependence and address the problem for the future. The country has resources of nickel, cobalt, molybdenum and heavy rare earth metals but further exploration but further exploration would be needed to evaluate the quantities of their reserve. So there is a need to create strategic mineral reserves on the lines of along the lines of strategic petroleum reserves. Today we are having the strategic petroleum reserves. I think you are all aware in Mangalore you have, in Vishakapatnam you have. So that means we will, whenever we are getting a cheaper rate, we are bringing and we are storing. Later we are utilizing such a buffer or such a stock of all these minerals you have to create. And your policy should be in such a way. And second one you have to explore. You have to explore in India what is the level of quantity that is available. To ensure continuous supply of minerals, also policy should consider investing in internal research including technological innovation of mineral exploration and processing and development. Exploration is one aspect. Processing is difficult. Getting raw is easy, but processing is difficult. So you need to have that processing technology. Recycling, reusing and repurposing is important. So you should not waste all these available metals now. That is why they have come up with recycling. Recycling of all electronic, electric equipment, even vehicles. Because these metals are now, tomorrow there may be a shortage of these metals. So the recycling of metals or the policy towards the metals is very, very important to achieve green energy targets. That is what the survey is saying. Is it clear? Online students, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Long term low emission development strategy. So, India submitted long term low carbon development strategy on November 14, 2022 at COP 27. Ah, what is the focus? How India want to reduce the emissions? Focus on rational utilization of natural resources with due regard to the energy security transition from fossil fuel will be undertaken in a just, smooth, sustainable and all inclusive manner. Anyway, you can understand that. Encompasses the objectives of national hydrogen policy. National hydrogen policy. So, we wanted to enhance this hydrogen policy. Apart from hydrogen policy, there is an ethanol policy. Uh, there is a solar and wind energy policy. Electric vehicles policy. So, these are all the policies that we have. <coughs> Increased biofuels especially ethanol blending in petrol, rest of the thing you can understand on ethanol blending. So, 20 percent recently. Earlier, we actually the target was 20 percent by 2030, but we have advanced it to 25-26. Climate resilient urban development, very, very important. Climate resilient urban development. That means now the urban areas are unable to withstand the change in climate. It may be heat wave, it may be floods, it can be severe pollution, it can be anything. But you have to design your urban cities in such a way that they must be resilient to the changing climate. Integrated planning, mainstreaming, adoption, enhancing energy, resources, efficiency, effective green building code, these are all the things. Uh, India's industrial sector will continue on a strong growth path with a vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat and Make in India. Okay, we will continue regarding finances with respect to green economy tomorrow. And there is some more important aspect recently. How many schedules this Wildlife Protection Act 1970 is having? Wildlife Protection Act 1972, how many schedules it has? 
four, five, six, seven. Five. Recently there was a change. Are you aware about it? Huh? Ah, it was mentioned in economic survey. That is important. You may get a question. Okay. Recently the schedules got changed. Otherwise, earlier they used to ask a question on schedules of wildlife protection act. Okay. Tomorrow I'll discuss. Okay. We'll meet tomorrow. Okay. Online students, is it clear? Yes. And tomorrow yes. I'll explain agriculture sector. Lot of data will be given in agriculture sector. You will come to know about the production, all these things. Okay. Thank you. Amrita, IAS Academy.